Hey guys, welcome back to History of Vision Success. I'm here and I'm again going to give you a video on um, migration. So this is good and useful for the um, AQA and Edexcel migration courses. This video is going to be on the Ulster plantations. So the Ulster plantations are normally and can often be grouped with the event of the Highland Clearances because they were both part of an English plan to eradicate the Gaelic way of life. Now, this way of life existed both in Ireland and in Scotland. And so that's why sometimes um, we, we kind of view these events as comparative because in both cases, it was the British essentially using force and power to eradicate traditions and cultures and crush the spirit of, of the Gaelic kind of way of living in Ireland and in Scotland. So this video is going to focus on what happened in Ireland. I'll do another video on Scotland. So what actually happened in um, the Ulster plantations? Well, there's quite a bit of history to the colonization of Ireland and plantations in Ireland. And in order to enable you to get those grade nines, I'm going to run through it quickly now. So Henry VIII really started the idea of the colonization of Ireland. He was the first person to declare himself the King of Ireland. And as you can see by this map, Ireland was really divided by this point. So we've got land held by native Irish lords, Anglo-Irish lords, the English king. And as you can see, the English king really did not have that much control beyond an area called the Pale. Now, the first plantations were created under Mary. Mary created two plantations, um, and I've put those names on the screen behind me for you. She confiscated Irish-owned land. She also used a policy of surrender and free grant, which was where she confiscated lands from lords and she would only give the land back if you swore, swore, swore your fealty, your loyalty to her. She also encouraged colonization by the English. She sent over English lords to take over land. And she also enacted martial law at the time, which meant that you could be executed for for crimes without trial, without jury. Even despite these very harsh methods, these plantations failed. They were attacked routinely by the Irish. They were very expensive and they didn't work. Now, Elizabeth, who succeeded Mary, also tried plantations. She decided to try privately funded ones. So she encouraged noblemen to go over and to set up, establish their own plantations at their own cost. She focused heavily on the areas of Ulster and Munster, which are in Northern Ireland, what well, today Northern Ireland. However, these also failed because they were again attacked by the Irish. They were very unsustainable. It was incredibly difficult to keep control of these places. Um, and it, it de facto led to an event we call the Nine Years' War, which was war led by Hugh O'Neill, um, particularly and most notably because he felt his interests were not being expressed at court and he resented the English interference in Ireland. Now, this war was very unsuccessful for the English. While they managed to prevent any kind of major invasion of England, this wasn't really ever the aim of Hugh O'Neill. And rather than a quick victory, as they might have um, hoped, and believed would happen, they ended up spending over two million pounds, almost bankrupting the crown. And it, it left James, who succeeded Elizabeth as she died without child, um, an incredibly difficult situation because he had a huge amount of debt. He was around 400,000 pounds in debt when he took the throne over from Elizabeth and the war was still officially going on despite her death. So the first thing that James did was he wrote and he called for a treaty and that treaty was the Treaty of Mellifont, which we call it. O'Neill agreed to the treaty and surrendered on good terms. However, following the treaty, the English um, invaded an area of Ireland called West. I'm really bad at pronouncing these things, um, about pronouncing these names. Sorry, my apologies. West Briemph. Um, and ended up having a 12-day siege. Now, there were 3,000 English men in an incredibly powerful force, 
and it meant James had the upper hand um, in this treaty. Therefore, he gave the Irish kind of um, an ultimatum and they signed the treaty, which gave good terms. It was a bid to end the violence. So James wasn't particularly harsh with this treaty. He gave full pardons, the return of estates. Um, he abandoned titles and private armies, and he ensured that the nobles swore loyalty to the English crown. However, despite this, despite James in his mind being very um, tolerant of the fact the Irish lords had just kind of come up in rebellion against the crown, mistrust remained. And in 1607, we had what we call the flight of the earls and a number of Irish earls went over to Catholic Spain to unite with them and organize against England. When this happened, James took the opportunity to seize their abandoned land and create plantations as the ones we know of and we learn about in this course. So he established plantations in Northern Ireland. So from the map, you can see all the red areas were established by James and the orange areas were privately planted by English noblemen. Half a million acres of arable land was planted, and these are a number of different names you can learn and memorize to use as a example. Remember, to get grade nine, it's really about using those very precise, specific examples. Now, the problem was that the plantations and the English were very different in many different um, areas than the people living there, and this caused not only resentment, frustration but also a clash of culture so people living in I in Ulster at the time were Irish and the colonists who were sent over were most notably Scottish and English the Ulster people were predominantly Catholic whereas the colonists were Protestants and the Ulster people were Gaelic whereas the colonists had been anglicized this really um showed Ireland that the aim of the English at this point, the aim of the plantations were to sever ties with Gaelic Ireland and Gaelic Scotland, to anglicize Ireland, to weaken opposition, and really to bring Ireland under the control of the English crown, um, to colonize Ireland, to dominate Ireland, and to bring them under the, the supremacy of, of the English throne and the English empire as such. So that's what happened. Now, I'm going to do an impact on significance, so that will again help you with your essay on significance for this course, and I'm going to do a video on the Highland clearances, so you can use both examples, um, you can compare if you get them in the comparison question, and you can use them both as examples of England using their power to try and crush um, the Gaelic culture both in Ireland and Scotland.